Gordon J. Ray is, uh, you're in a disadvantage. Um, uh, Ebkley, ask her, uh, uh, when, when Emplumada uh, was published, it was a passionate uh, lyric poet. And um, I remember when, when Lorna read at Cody's, uh, whenever that was, uh, however long ago, I was tuned in for that. There's also, uh, that was followed by From the Cables of Genocide, Poems of Love and Hunger. And, uh, but I remember uh, when she read it, Cody's, I was looking for that lyric voice, and instead there was a kick-ass political uh, poet. I mean, she was reading from Drive, which uh, actually has five different books and many different kinds of poems. But now we've got Siento, a, a completely different thing. Uh, this is this is a hundred hundred word love poems. And uh, as is pointed out at the back, siento spelled this way means hundred, but it also could mean I feel if you were to spell it uh, differently. And these poems are, they are each a hundred words. Some of them are funny. There's like a hundred words to my ass, a uh, hundred words to Google. But they are like an extract of uh, feeling. And uh, there's just the pure spin of these, uh, these words and the kind of a form that you discover behind, because you've got a hundred words. So there's a brand new book, Lorna de Cervantes. Let's give her a little Thank you, Richard. Thank you all for coming. It's always a pleasure. Um, you know, I think I've only read for Poetry Flash once before. Maybe twice if I did do an Emplumada reading, and that would have been like no, no, early, early so. on in 81. So. Read yeah, read yeah. Because I think I only actually did an official Poetry Flash reading yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. once right. when yeah. Drive yeah. came out. That's so, right. uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be here, and at that reading five years ago, uh, Joyce uh, asked me uh, to read again sometime and who I would like to read with, and I said, uh, Barbara Jane Reyes. <laughs> and then the book was delayed, and by that time, uh, I think Barbara was in between books or had read already uh, for the series. So uh, uh, one of the fun things about uh, running a series, as you know, is being able to match poets, you know, and thinking about these individual voices and how they weave together and how they've actually influenced each other. Because I've been watching this girl since she was a girl, uh, uh, way back. Uh, 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 and uh, I thought, ah, yes, a poeta de San Francisco, and also a poeta de San Francisco, having been born there. My father uh, and his wife, Susan Cervantes, started the Presida Eyes Mural Center. Uh, so uh, the Mission District is, uh, uh, you know, in the heart of me. Um, and so I thought, well, that would be cool, you know, like a younger generation and an older generation. So uh, if you don't know the other books, uh, and if you're a scholarly type, this book has just come out, Stunned Into Being, Essays on the Poetry of Lorna de Cervantes. I'll warn you, it's a sad story, but I already know how it ends. <laughs> so it's weird when people write about you, you know, and it was even weirder because they didn't give me the galleys, you know. They didn't trust me with the galleys. <laughs> so I never actually read this book until uh, last month. And so I had to write a poem for it. Um, <clears throat> and this is called The Latin Girl Speaks of Rivers. And I have a few copies of these. Here. And of course, A Latin Girl Speaks of Rivers is after uh, uh, a poem um, by Langston Hughes, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. Uh, 
because this book, going back to my early poetry as well as the novels that I'm writing, a young adult novel and a novel set here in Berkeley, uh, among other places, Bay Area, San Francisco, San Jose, Santa Cruz. So uh, I'm kind of stuck in this 14-year-old mind frame. Uh, so this is The Latin Girl Speaks of Rivers. When I wrote about the serpentine river, I was really writing about a rape. When I wrote about the moon over an oak tree, I was writing about a pre-teen pregnancy. When I wrote about the crystalline sea, I was writing all the horror around me into intricate filigree. I was writing my heart out. I was writing myself back in. When I wrote about heart, I imagined a muscle of infinite distance, of the brave little choo-choo times 10. I was dreaming of a heart-shaped boat, an extension of my past, my trapped beginnings. When I wrote of a river, it was one I could get myself into twice. It was, it was wide as an Anglo-damned Nile, long as the Negro Mississippi. I wanted to wrench myself a new closure. I wanted the tourniquet and the cannon. I wanted the white water to sail me to a place where the journey never ends. Instead, of this endless, instead of the endless fluid nights. I wanted the fissures to heal of their own magma. I wanted something of the banks to make clay, to make me a setting at someone's bountiful table. I wanted real silver on the plates of that liquid path. I wanted its icy skin to burn against mine, to cleave with each lap and run like the fallen log I was. I wanted the box of my childhood to open. I wrote longing in some minor key about a crystalline river, about the telling moon, about a single leaf that could carry me home about the knowing sea, about me. And I have a brand new book coming out, uh, also from Wings Press um, in San Antonio, one of the oldest uh, literary presses uh, around. And I'm happy to have my last uh, three, now four books. So published by them. Um, this is a book called Sueño, 30-something of the cruelest. And one of the things I've been doing, uh, I guess for about the last 10 years, beginning with Drive, is really stepping away from myself. Uh, you know, uh, there was a strategy to Emplamada to have it be accessible and to document my personal history, a uh, personal history that was not being documented in any uh, of the official forms of history, uh, or even history at that point in time. Um, so I've sort of been backing away doing docu-poems uh, uh, in Drive, the Long Poem Coffee, Long Poem Bananas, and though they're all online, uh, as well as in the book, and, uh, and certainly uh, Siento, which I'll be reading from 100, 100 Word Love Poems, uh, all mostly poems written when I was not in love and not to anybody or about anybody or about anything. Instead, I would go to this website every Thursday and get a word, and I wouldn't know what the word was. And uh, all I knew is I had to write 100 words on that word. And then I figured just to make it harder on myself, it had to be a love poem, you know, whatever word it was. And so, um, and then now this book, Sueño, 30-something of the cruelest, you know, a uh, April is the cruelest month. Um, and in April, coming up, uh, Naporimo, National Poetry Writing Month. 
you can join online and you can write a poem every day for the month of April, knowing it does not have to be a good poem. <laughs> it just has to be a poem. Uh, so once again, I would uh, do this exercise with my students where we would uh, put a word in a hat or a phrase in a hat, pull it out, write a poem. Uh, so I had these little pieces of paper scattered around my office uh, that I would pull from every day in the month of April. And then I would go to this site, oneword.com. Uh, you could go to oneword.com. It's got a cute little rainbow three-minute, you know, uh, uh, you know, timer there, and it gives you a word every day, oneword.com. So um, that's what this book is, 30-something uh, of the cruelest. Here's one. How to get a car wash. Take a $5 bill, fold it, throw it away. Take a penny, scold it, make it pay, and then spend it. Take a chance, hold it to your heart, blow on it, send it to a friend. Take a moment, extol it, breathe fire into its face. Face it, then forget it. All the way the highways go, drive them in a silver sedan. Ride past the grandmother with the palsy gait, the old man shuffler by the wooden crate. The child holding a blue balloon, waiting by the grate. Forget them. Remember passion. Remember where you put your keys. Recall registers ringing on Christmas Eve. Record voices and shrill sounds still ringing in the leaden ear. Then pay the master, pay the slave. Fill up on tanks of rage and rest. Gun the engines of your folly. Flee towards the second best, the third eye, the favored relative, the sullen child cheered by snow. Feel your way back to the second crossing. And there, by the fresh grave in the mirror, open the hoses, shine the chromy cheeks. Polish the head and care. White walls are great for poetry. Chewy came late, or not at all. He pissed off the principal and pulled the hair of the pretty chola by the choya. He dissed his homework, fed the chinchilla barbecue Doritos until it died after excreting a brilliant orange mound of dust. He jabbed the janitor in the face with his pencil, then furrowed the brow of the brow-beaten teacher. All the classics passed him by, all the books with spines he let fly. He broke the headlights of the head cheerleader's car and then slingshot the lights in the parking lot. He stole all the hot dogs from the cafeteria, and they then ate all the strawberry popsicles, too. And afterwards, he picked up a pen and followed his fate. He scrambled up the scribble, letting long vowels and longing go chomping at the gate. His open hand, his heart in a great O oh of wonder. Oh, white walls are great for poetry. Wow. <laughs> friendly fire. He was the friendliest fire you'll ever meet. The burning brow, hawk-like, eagle-eyed, and splendid. Black wings opening when he looked at you. You, stunning in the view. He had a vein constricted at the temple, a single throb pulse of rage before he hit you. The most beautiful man you'll ever meet. Full of I love you's and honey, the stick and sweet spoil of summer sweating off that brow. He'll need you, he'll time you, ride you till it hurts. Be a word he doesn't speak. A turn of phrase in French, something foreign to this land, the red dirt that birthed him, first son of a civilized tribe. He was the most too good to be true you'd ever seen, and then you vanished under a lump on your head the size of an apricot 
plum color, plush. Just you, first, first nation penalty. He was the friendliest fire you had ever smoked. He was the quickest burn in an underground forest of men. He was the timber, a tender fire, and going down in flames. And this is for my hero, my long-term hero, long-time hero to that 14-year-old girl, 15-year-old girl, who first heard her singing on Chris Strakowitz's show, uh, KPFA Radio, back in the days when you can hear, uh, uh, you can hear an Indian raga, and then you can hear some blues, and then you can hear uh, some Grateful Dead, and then you can hear a Mozart sonata, and then you can hear Memphis Mini all night long. This is a poem from Memphis Minnie, Sweet Sugar on Brown Dresses. Memphis Minnie stole the show, twanging and wailing on her electric guitar, making the train sing through the blood of the dancers, their sewing machines stitching brown uniforms into souls through their steps, the dance taking the hand of sorrow for a spin. She would plan the great escape, sojourner searching for her truth, all gussied up and settling for a six-string happiness. Next train to Clarksville, it's a long rock walk home. I've been there, that taxi ride cross town with the Pakistani driver who was born there. Sure, he said, the newspaper just ran a big spread on her. Her stance, her grinning gold, the accents of her indigenous brows, even near death, a face and the paralyzed hands folded on the porch in Memphis. Another photograph, another kind of home, far from the stockyards, the killing pens, the sundown laws. It was not that my man done left me, that pleading through the night, it was that I hate to see that evening sun go down when the law had the right to arrest you. You, an unaccompanied negress, rape you, beat you, sterilize you, and abort your child when the sun go down. Uh, University towns are all the same. I used to hang out in Berkeley, and then for 20 years I was uh, teaching at CU Boulder, loving those mountains there. And uh, this is a poem I wrote in April, the cruelest month. And I'm sure you see it here in Berkeley. Kitchen grief. See the buzzards over Boulder today? Dead hot, earthquake weather if it been on the coast, circling calculation. What station the next body lay, the birds above the quad, over the head of the upturned Dalton, trumbos all handed, all heart mission, the bay of sky opening to the merchant ships, the clouds, the few skiffs of passion still lingering around the campus. Jesse dead, but not yet buried, laid out today, his boyish laugh laid to rest, un sueño in a glass of remembrance, the promise of spring heavy as the odor of a hungover senior, all the misconceptions loaded in a carafe of courage, these bold plans, now a kitchen of grief, the feasting yet to come. And a single contract is signed with a pledge of loyalty and a drink to that as the buzzards of Boulder move up for a closer inspection in this season of suicide and failing grades. A full-blown something laid to nest beside the roadside, a ring of camp cats, a circle of camps. And uh, oh, maybe uh, a 
couple more from this. It's so fun to read. This is a brand new book, so it's like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Burial. Under the burning stones, between the skins of mud flats and clay tablets of a trash abandoned river, I see you, mounds of the living under the flesh of the dead piquant wafts of your shreds, the ragged flags, a putrid longing to belong, to sing once again, a hallowed song of self in a place under the open freeway lanes, a voice in the rush of rush, a bare tunnel asking the question, what is buried here? Who thrusts out among the living chalk? Who answers an unasked question? All of America is an Indian burial mound. <clears throat> Tiny. This is dedicated to my homegirls in San Jose. Tiny watched out the side of her mouth, talked out a turn, her sinuous sorrow tied up in a bundle of charm. Her tattooed arms, a guest register in ink, the ball penned manner, the eloquent script, the medieval illuminations pinned in pink. She never left off or ever let it go. The vario bulldog, a so-and-so, she taped her bangs into letters, formed us troops. She's still there, 15 years of pleasure, ripped, R.I.P. And, okay. That was uh, Sueño, Dream, 30-something of the cruelest. And now, ciento, which also not just means 100, but is the word for like 101, 102, 100 and you. <laughs> you know, it implies that there's something else that should be there. Ciento, besides I feel, 100, 100 word love poem. So, what's your favorite number from 1 to 100? Shout it out. 24. 24, 24. <laughs> Beware, this is like uh, tarot cards. One, who, who wanted 24? Ah, 24. 100 words to be pixelated by you. Um, when I first got this word pixelated, I didn't know what it meant. Uh, uh, I figured it was like the little dots, you know, in the, you know, your television, digital, right? You know, but instead it's a word that means when you drink too much wine, you know, you get pixelated. <laughs> you know, like with the pink elephants and the cartoons and the little bubbles and the guys all like that, you know, that's pixelated. I want to be pixelated, twitterpated by you. I want to be rounded up and eaten, drunk on the express hunger of your mess. Buy me 100 ways into your heart. Sell me 100 tickets to your whole lot of love. I want to stay for the whole show, chew up the scenery, dance on the dinner plates. I see pixies in your eyes, your sensuous lips. I want to weigh too far into the current, certified and surrendered. I want to watch as my body drifts too far out in the throes to live in you close to the heart. Another one. Seven. seven, seven, seven. Radiant, 100 words to radiant. You, in the radiant crepuscular light, your succulent heart, sex sucked lips, your twining hair all halo and sash, your fill like the hummingbird suckle, Day. I am radiant to imagine you, half animal, half staff of ember, your lightning rays of mirth, unimaginable in the dark, in other than holding you. In a spirit land, 
whisked away to grace my hand, <coughs> the giving night, the airy dawn, the awakening from withdrawal. As the valley hunkers, mist hangs around her love. River, I flow with you, fog struck and caught in your aperture, your appetite for me, your blessing kiss eyes, windstruck, radiant. Mm -hmm. Another one. 51. 51. 51. Restraint. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, these poems are not for anyone at all, uh, except that, um, uh, except for a couple, which are elegies during, uh, uh, um, yeah. Um, this is 100 words of restraint for a Berkeley poet, an elegy for a Berkeley poet, Alfred Arteaga. 100 words of restraint. Oh, I have to say he grew up in my neighborhood. I mean, he, he in San Jose, we met in San Jose in like 1973. 100 words of restraint, an elegy. How much hope we had. Restraint was how we grew, ever twining our long way out of there, intertwining sans desire, you, a golden lotus. Oh, I have to say, he was a race car driver, and he had a golden <laughs> yellow lotus. You, a golden lotus, darling. How you fit that warm shoe, darling. You wore that new car scent, crisp and sweet, succulent for a man. Did I covet you like the rest? I shouldered my restraint. Strapped into you, how could I escape that ejection seat? This far from you, without restraint, I'll say it, how I loved you. How death did us part. You were my heart, de veras, garnal, corazón. And at last, we gave us our past. Mm. Another one? 89. 89, 89, 89. You know, when I uh, uh, graduated from high school, I vowed never to think in numbers. So, you know, uh, uh, you, you, uh, these, these are not connected to numbers or anything. And people started asking me, well, did you count the numbers, you know, did you count the words as you were doing it? And no, I think the first couple of them. And, and then what I did is I just did like five words per line, and then it all got to be the same size. And sometimes it would insist on a form and sometimes not. Uh, uh, but anyways, <laughs> I didn't have to think about the numbers. And I don't know the numbers of the poems, but I insisted that the the publisher put the numbers in these little chumash uh, uh, thing, glyph for sun that's in the caves. I'm chumash from Santa Barbara, partly my grandmother's son. 100 words for a star. Who wanted this one? Me. Oh, you did. 100 words for a star. It was in the stars. A falling star foretold you. Venus was an incoming plane colliding with Mars, and Jupiter, a single hot eye in the moonless sky. I wished for you, but never got on board. Last ticket to paradise, a missed opportunity. You, smile, a constellation I used to find me. Who will find me? Navigation by heart. Your dusty trail, a rumor in the mill of heaven. I follow your orbit, circling you in a cosmic dance. Hundreds of light years until tomorrow, until your ghostly touch. Hundreds of broken hearts before Venus comes in for a landing. Wow. <laughs> like I said, these are like uh, tarot cards. Anyone else dare? <laughs> 99. 99? Who's that? John Oliver? Oh, no, you? 99? 99. The second to last. Yeah, I guess I got about to 60 of these and uh, uh, thought I started reading the back. I was 
posting them anonymously. I wasn't thinking anybody was going to read them. Hence the 100 words to my ass, right? You know, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but after a while, I realized, oh, I'll do a book of these. I'll just do, I'll stop at 100. And, and these are all exactly every week. There's no, they're, they're chronological, so it's a hundred weeks, how, what is it, a year and three quarters or whatever. Like I said, I don't think in numbers. 99, 100 words to your shelter. I love how you shelter me, the warmth within your hearth, all that wood you had stored. I love all that wilderness in the heart of you, all that uncut lumber just waiting for my touch. I love the human path of you, all that tramping to get there here, where a river runs through it, a shelter of smoke, of sensuous ribbons of past. Let me demonstrate. I will lay down my arms, play dead for you, wait for resurrection. Take me. I know a road clear to there. It will get us to where we will last. And I'd like to uh, end with a brand new poem, uh, as well as uh, uh, invite you, if you uh, uh, venture and have enough gas to get across the bay. I'm doing an iPad reading. <laughs> Oh, this is cool. It, it like, uh, it's magnetic, so it like, sticks to the... <laughs> How cool is that? Um, anyway, if you have enough gas and uh, uh, gumption and only make it across the bay once a month, uh, uh, I encourage you all to come the first Wednesday of every month. I'm hosting a brand new series at a brand new used bookstore, Alley Cat Books on 24th Street, 3036. 24th Street, um, across from uh, uh, um, Modern Times Books, the first place I ever did a reading, Modern Times Books, uh, when Pumata came out. My first San Francisco reading was there. So uh, we just had a reading with uh, myself and uh, uh, Jim Powell over there in the back. You ever want to bring me back? Me and Jim Powell make a good tea. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, um, so uh, April 4th, First Wednesday of the month for free, Shetty Moraga and Sandra Cisneros and myself. The three, I mean, not Sandra Cisneros, what am I saying? Sandra, I just saw Sandra the other day in Texas. Uh, Sandra, du, uh, 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 Sharon Dubiago, sorry. Sharon Dubiago, Shetty Moraga, and myself for free, Alley Cat Books, 3036, 24th Street, 6 to 8 p.m. You could don't go dancing afterwards, go catch some jazz, Yoshi's, whatever you want to do. Get a good burrito on the mission. What's up? They're open. They're what? Open. Oh, oh, duh, yeah, open mic, first Wednesday of every month, please come down to Alley Cat Books in the Mission, um, and uh, join us, um, uh, you, but Barbara Jane Reyes, I don't know if you confirmed you're on that list, aren't you? I'm sure you are. I might be. Yeah, I sent you, uh, uh, probably to an old email, oh. or something, uh, uh, oh, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, I just came back from I just came back from uh, uh, San Antonio on my own ticket. Uh, um, I am the new uh, uh, I am this year's UC Regents uh, uh, lecturer. Uh, it's a great honor, and I'm housed in Berkeley in the English department. Thank you. I'm pleased about it. That 14-year-old girl inside of here is just really, really super pleased because she used to go hug those trees all every weekend. Uh, but anyway, uh, and dream about, you know, someday going to school there, or, you know, and, uh, but anyway, uh, and I'll be reading there uh, April 6th uh, for the commemoration of, uh, what is it, uh, 40 years of Quinto Sol uh, uh, Press um, there. But anyway, um, Chicano literature, 40 years, beginning with Quinto Sol Press, 45 years, something like that. 45 years, I think it's, it is. Um, uh, I dedicated most of my life to publishing uh, uh, Chicano writers like Barbara Jane Reyes. Not that I published her, but I just want to say to be Chicana is a, is, a, is a state of consciousness, an awareness of occupied land, an awareness of your history, an awareness of your indigeneity, an awareness of the Americas, Ameri uh, 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 Ameri uh, uh, and that we come from the four corners 
and we're here. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, a lot of things have been happening in Tucson, as you know. Uh, recently, HB, uh, a house, uh, house bill um, uh, uh, 2281, uh, Tucson Unified School Districts went into middle schools and high schools during the classes where classes were in session, boxed up books like Sandra Cisneros' House on Mongo Street. My Press Mongo was the first to publish Sandra Cisneros. The little chapbook kind of discovered her. Uh, Jimmy Santiago uh, Baca, also another one, Mongo. Uh, 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 Ray Gonzalez, uh, Carmen Tofoya, you know, and other honorary Chicanas like Henry David Thoreau of Civil Disobedience, uh, William Shakespeare of The Tempest and Just The Tempest. We don't want those uppity slaves getting any ideas, right? You know, runaway slaves. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Paulo Freire, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Uh, Sherman Alexi, these books right over here. All Sherman Alexie's books uh, 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 banned from the Unified School District Tucson uh, uh, and a zillion anthologies that I'm in. Uh, and all of these writers I dedicated my life to, and of these writers who inspired me, uh, Rudolfo Anaya, Tomas Rivera, all of these books boxed up, Jose Antonio Burciaga, another poet I published. Uh, um, you know, uh, Luis Urrea, a, a poet I taught uh, was my graduate student at, uh, uh, at, at uh, CU uh, Boulder. Those, all of his books, you know, and he's got books about being a Catholic worker and working on the dumps in Tijuana and writing about the border issues. I mean, controversial, come on. Sandra Cisneros, House on Monaco yeah, right. Street, Red Shoes, come on. What's controversial about that? That's overthrowing the government? That's terrorism? That's profanity? That's, you know, anyway. And these poems, my poems that are in these anthologies are in the SATs. So no more ethnic studies, no more Mexican American studies class, no more of these textbooks where they would find my poem in there. So if they don't, are not exposed to these, these the House on Mongo Street and these, uh, these other works, if they're not exposed to this, then they're gonna miss the, the test on the SAT, whereas the advanced placement kids, which are all the white kids or whatever, you know, okay, they get to, you know, it's not banned in there, but it's banned in Mexican. Anyway, so it's a big issue. So I went down, there's a caravan uh, distributing, Libro Traficante, like narco traficante. You know? <laughs> Libro Traficante, we're, we're bringing banned books into Arizona. So it's a caravan that started in Houston up to uh, uh, San Antonio. Uh, so I just came back from San Antonio. It's in uh, Albuquerque, right now, so they're reading right now in Albuquerque for this thing, uh, Luis Urrea, I just read with Sandra Cisneros uh, just the other day, so I wrote a poem for this. A Chicano poem. They tried to take our words, steal away our hearts under their imaginary shawls, their laws, their libros, their libra no señores, no more. They tried to take away our spirit in the rock, the mountain, the living waters. They tried to steal our languages, our grandmother's packs, our magma car cartas for their own serfs. They raised the land and raised a constitution declared others three-fifths a human being, snapped shackles, cut off a foot, raped our grandmothers into near-mute oblivion. They burned the sacred codices, and the molten goddesses rose anew in their flames. They tried to silence a nation, tried to send the people back to the four corners of the world. They drew a line in the sand and dared us to cross it, tried to peel off our skins, chipetotex screaming through our indigenous consciousness. They tried to brand America into our unread flesh the skull and crossbones flying at half-mast. They tried to put their eggs in our baskets, tried to weave the native out of us with their drink and drugs, <coughs> tried to switch their mammy-raised offspring, beaded and unshaven as the colorless pea 
under our mattresses in a cultural bait and switch, hook and bait. They tried to take our words, give us the Spanish translation for pain, serve us the host of fallow fields on a china plate, stripped us of the germ and seed, fed us in a steady diet of disease and famine. Where is the word for tomorrow to the dead? When is our kingdom come? They claim our reclamations, our reparations, a thing of our imaginations. I discover this truth to be self-evident. In the beginning, we were here. I declare us here today and speaking. Thank you.